Now those things had started to worry me. And he'd had the same problems. Now he was 20 years younger than me. And I was really surprised when we got talking more, when I did a bit of research, of how many men have had similar issues and the impact of low testosterone and what that can have on you. So I thought, I need to research this more. Testosterone across the board is lowering more and more in men and in women, because women need it as well, yeah. not to the same degree, which is causing horrendous problems. I was probably about 23 years old when I started to notice what were symptoms of low testosterone. I went for two walks on two consecutive days with my family, about four miles each day, something like that. And on the second day, I got halfway around, like almost like the furthest point away from the car, and I just broke down in tears and said to my wife, I, I can't make it back. Stop being scared of this masculinity, this testosterone, you know, it, we need it. Do you think it's been put in a, in a bad light? 100%. I hadn't heard anything about testosterone replacement therapy or TRT as it's known until a couple of years ago. In the past, I'd suffered with my mental health and I've been to the doctors on and off for about 15 years. I'd go through cycles, trying different antidepressants, and they never really had the effect that I hoped it would. I was speaking to a friend of mine a few years back, and he said, have you ever had your testosterone checked? I knew very little about testosterone, apart from the fact that it was a male hormone. Come down to the seaside of Paynton and we're going to talk to members of the public and find out what they know about TRT and testosterone replacement therapy. When I say testosterone, what do you think about? It's a male thing. Yeah, aggressive males. Sort of promotes male characteristics, muscle building, that sort of thing. Men are full of it and testosterone. <laughs> Men are full of it and testosterone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I'm just teasing. Testosterone is a male. I am right, isn't it? It's a male hormone. So it's something that makes the, the male a male, I guess. Um, whether it's sexual drive or muscle or whatever it is, it's what a man has. And I believe some women have some bits of testosterone. Testosterone is what males have. It's called the male hormone. And uh, testosterone is what makes a man a man. Testosterone is the primary male sex hormone. It plays a key role in the development of male reproductive tissues, as well as promoting secondary sexual characteristics such as increased muscle and bone mass and the growth of body hair. Once synthesized, testosterone is secreted into the blood and carried to target cells in the male reproductive organs. Most of the testosterone is transported bound to a specific plasma called sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. Dr. Robert Stevens is an expert in the treatment of TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. Okay, so, so what you've got is your HPG axis. So what is that? So it's your hypopituitary gonadal axis. It's a self-regulating negative feedback mechanism whereby your body should be able to respond to external cues and internal change to regulate its own testosterone level. It's predominantly an internal change. Okay, so what is testosterone? Testosterone is an anabolic hormone necessary for growth and repair. So what's it responding to? The opposite of anabolism, catabolism. So that's activity. So you're predominantly active in the day to then be anabolic at night time. Testosterone levels naturally lower as men get older. But Patrick was just 23 when he noticed a problem. Yeah, so I, I went to the, the GP at the time and sort of said, you know, um, I think I'm experiencing 
low testosterone, I've got all these symptoms and, and stuff. And the response at the time, although a very good GP and one I'd had since I was, I was young, sort of said, you know, you're 23 years old, there's no way that you have low testosterone, but we'll do a blood test anyway, just to kind of put your mind at rest. Um, so, so I had the blood test done and then it's probably about a week later, I got a phone call at work from the doctor, a very concerned phone call saying, yeah, you know, your, your levels have come back very low, um, considering you're, you know, 23 years old. Normal levels of testosterone in a healthy man is are eight to twenty-eight. Yeah. Um, my mine was on two, three, two, two three. Yeah, and that is year after not taking steroids and being everything right, not taking recreational drugs. I mean, in my past, I've done silly things and experimented, but we're talking oh, more than a decade of living healthy wanting everything to work vibrantly, to, to live as long as I possibly can and to create more reads, mm. you know, which I have. So I, I need to make these work brilliantly, not just for, to, to reproduce, yeah. but so I can provide and live a vibrant, healthy life. I don't want to just survive, I want to thrive. I had a few blood tests and uh, they were, well, to say inconclusive is, is sort of underplaying it really. The GP actually said to me, this is the most nauseatingly normal set of blood tests he'd seen in 10 years. Get involved, is, is active, yeah, let's do it, come on. Could be positive. That's testosterone working in a positive fashion, which is needed in our society. Sort of fatigue, um, lack of energy, um, low libido um, and actually as well sort of anxiety and, and kind of the mental health aspect of, of, of having low testosterone. Well, I mean, on that walk back in May 2020, that was, that was the, the low point and the, and the real start of it, I guess. But for me, um, feeling like I had flu every day, so continually aching, bones, joints, muscles, um, extreme tiredness you know you tell people you're tired uh, but i mean this is bone weariness just wanting to curl up into a ball i just started feeling less vibrant less energy almost i, I actually admit it depression yeah well uh, it's horrible there are several recognized symptoms of low testosterone including erectile dysfunction and osteoporosis but each person is different my symptoms were i had low mood lack of concentration, low libido, brain fog, and I was struggling to focus. And I would really drop quite deep sometimes in terms of my depression, quite quickly. I'd feel so isolated. And I would even get to the stage where I start having suicidal thoughts. Continual aching, extreme fatigue, but for me by far the worst thing was brain fog just an inability to think coherently for any length of time, I would start a sentence and forget how to end it. And that really freaked me out because I, I basically I think for a living and talk for a living. And I was starting to lose the ability to do that. And having gone for it myself, low energy, low libido, no libido, not low libido, unless to be a sexual Tyrannosaurus, I'm like, hey, what's happened? What do you know about TRT, testosterone replacement therapy? I actually don't know anything about it. I mean, I've, I have heard of it because I am you know, a huge into the fighting scene, because I like boxing, I like MMA, UFC. So I have heard that some athletes do do, even bodybuilders do testosterone replacement therapy, TRT. So have you heard of testosterone replacement therapy? No. I've spoke about it with someone, but I don't know much about it. And have you heard of something called TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy? I've got the same no. Someone hasn't got it in naturally in their body, then it's obviously an artificial. Well, is it artificial replacement or is it? I don't know. No, I would. I wouldn't. Not surprised it exists. As people get older, testosterone must diminish. 
for some reason it must be necessary, but I've never heard of it as such. Basically to increase levels of tosterone, predominantly in, in males type thing, to stop muscle wasting, increase libido, that sort of thing. There's a very much a grey area between clinically low according to the, the guidelines and the regulatory bodies and optimal. Yeah. And it's like, well, that grey area, when you make the decision to start therapy, should be super considered. So are you, are you doing all the right things? Are you, are you addressing your stress? Are you addressing your sleep? Addressing your nutrition? Are you addressing your exercise? Are, is everything in line? So it should be. But even then, you kind of go, right, okay, well, if you were morbidly obese, you say, well, lose weight. Well, you can't lose weight because your physiology is going to fight against you. Yeah. So the decision to start therapy should, should always be considered. So there are too many of these clinics just going, it will sort you out. Yeah. The reality is, is TRT is relatively complicated, but in the same breath, relatively simple because the premise should be just normalizing physiology, how your body functions. You can try and improve testosterone levels naturally by having a much healthier lifestyle and better quality sleep. But if you still have a problem, what are the treatment options? So I went through the process of having a couple more blood tests um, just to check that it wasn't an anomaly. After that got referred to, to an endocrinologist on the NHS. After a, a period of a few months of seeing him I then started treatment which initially was um, the, the testosterone gel um, with no real impact so um, again still getting my levels checked I think they might have risen to seven or eight. Still nowhere near where they should be. I was probably having treatment for one to two, two years on the NHS. Um, with no real kind of impact on my testosterone levels and obviously all that time kind of still with the same symptoms, you know. Um, but I was effectively in a loop of kind of the levels just weren't going anywhere. So I went off to the doctors, I had a blood test and it came back and he said, it's within range, it's fine. I didn't feel fine. Every hormone has to be carefully balanced. And that's not just testosterone, that's every single hormone because they're all dependent, whether that direct that relationship be direct or indirect. So there's an absurdity to go and bang up the testosterone. It's got, it's got to be titrated according to effect. Because there was nothing um, really showing on the blood test that the GP did, he just said, well, look, the symptoms you're experiencing are a kind of post-viral fatigue. And because really there's only one virus in town, maybe it's long COVID. So I went and got tested. They put me on a course, I think it was around 2015 I first started. And I started feeling great again. What is the goal of therapy? You, as a patient, you might say, well, I want to improve my libido, I want to improve my mood. Well, how do you do that? Do you take a drug to improve your mood? Do you take a drug to improve your libido? Well, you want to normalise how your body functions to then allow you to feel good, to make, put the effort in to feel good. But without the foundation of testosterone, carefully balanced, you can't do that. You know that already. So hormones are essentially chemical messengers that help facilitate the function of the target organ. Without that chronic, stable hormone level, your nervous system and your brain can't work effectively. So we know there is treatment out there. The legal options are the NHS or private. But what happens if the NHS refuse to treat you because you fall within range? and you cannot afford to go private. When I was about 20 years old, I think I was 20, I, uh, I was into bodybuilding, uh, started training in the gym, and then obviously I wanted to be, have the physique that the people that was going on stage and that. So then I had a few people say to me, you know, um, this is the way to go if you want to do it, i.e. steroids. So at that age, Obviously, 20 years old, I wasn't too clued up with anything. You just go along with the flow, as you do. You just see what you want to look like, and that's it. You don't consider anything. So what happened with testosterone then? What, when were you aware of that? What, the testosterone side of things? Not till I got older, to be honest with you. Till I was about mid-30s, something like that. And then I started to, you know, get to know a little bit more of what I was actually doing, rather than just what people told me to do. Hey, um... Testosterone, obviously, historically, has been seen as by the guys in the gym, wasn't it, really? 
Is that is it still seen as that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, as you know, we've, we're working incredibly hard to remove the stigma, um, but that stigma will never go. Um, there will always be the association between testosterone and performance enhancement. And you've got a very blurry line between um, sports TRT and legitimate TRT. So the premise behind TRT is normalization to establish ba balance. Sports TRT is to be, you know, ripped in the gym. Mm. Um, and with the power of social media, you, we've, got, we've got no chance of removing that. And then you've got sort of a, um, a stuffy medical community who don't fully understand why men want to go on testosterone. Uh, and they will always see it as a performance enhancement, kind of Love Island body nonsense. Whereas everybody that presents here is wanting to feel better about themselves and normalize their levels for optimal well-being. May 2022, I took on a new employee here. And uh, he said to me, have you considered that it might be low testosterone? And of course, as I said, well, of course not. You know, I'm a man, I don't have low testosterone, of course not. <laughs> and the GP had never mentioned it, so it definitely hadn't come up. And, but he uh, had been in a similar situation and he suggested I get in touch with the men's health clinic in uh, Ferndown in Dorset. And, and so I did. So I had a couple of blood tests, initial consultation with Dr. Stevens, and he just said, look, your levels are off a cliff, really. Uh, this is a definite case where you're a candidate for testosterone replacement therapy. Did you go to the doctors? Yeah, I did, yeah. So tell me about that. First, they fobbed me off, gave me a load of antidepressants, which made me feel even worse. Lots of people have done naughty things. You know, obviously steroids, recreational drugs, alcohol, um, opiates, antidepressants. Um, the reality is it's obviously a no-judgment zone because, you know, who the hell am I to judge you? So what, what you do now is what's important and how you go forward is what's important. What you've done in the past is of no consequence to me at all. Um, I think that's super important because, you know, the NHS has got this sort of dogmatic approach. You know, say you've done anabolic steroids. Well, why, why did you do anabolic steroids? It wasn't to hurt anybody, it was for self-improvement. You know, it might be misguided, mm. but it was for self-improvement. And then conversely, you've got somebody with type 2 diabetes that's systematically eaten themselves into type 2 diabetes. And they've got all the support in the world. So it's, it's a problem with society, not the fact they've done steroids. But again, antidepressants. You know, the band-aid that is applied by the NHS when you present with low mood. I mean, it's utterly disgusting. The use of antidepressants for males and females has risen from 6.8 million identified patients in 2015 stroke 16 to 8.5 million for 2022 stroke 23. And then I went back to him, I said, look, can you test my testosterone levels? Tested it, said, yeah, you're fine, you're within range. So I actually uploaded uh, an American document what shown what age you should be to what levels you should have. I had the testosterone levels of an 80-year-old man. You know what I mean? Something ain't right. So I started to explain to this doctor what, you know, testosterone levels should be and stuff, and he wasn't clued up. So what, what were your levels? Uh, I think the first two tests were 10 point something and 9 point something, which technically is within the range. It's in the NHS range of what testosterone levels should be. You know, the NHS ranges are broad by definition. And so it's quite feasible for you to be towards the end of the normal range, but actually still feel like rubbish. From 2015 to 2023, most patients that were prescribed antidepressants through the NHS were generally in the 45 to 59 age group for both genders. The doctors were, wasn't willing to help me, sent me home. They just said, look, we'll give you more antidepressants. But I was never going to cut it, so I had to make a few decisions myself. And what was that decision? Go back on testosterone without the doctor's help. And how did you get that? Off the black market. Got onto the phone to a few uh, associates and um, got it delivered. Banged about 
you know, banged a bit back in me and before I knew it, I felt normal again. November 2022, I started the treatment. It took about six weeks really to start uh, feeling the difference, but I'm now eight or nine months in and I'm 100% fixed, feeling normal. There are plenty of well-known figures that are reported to be receiving TRT treatment. More recently, Olympic medalist rower Steve Redgrave opened up about his own story on Breakfast TV. It's interesting that recently you say over the last few years you noticed you gaining weight, becoming tired, becoming depressed, losing your get up and go and you put it down to your age. Dare I say, that is the description that a lot of women of your mm. age might use to describe the yeah. menopausal symptoms. Yeah, I, I think there, there, there are some links that uh, I don't think there is really a, a male's men, menopause, but uh, as much as there is within women's, but there certainly seems to be links, uh, especially with testosterone mm -hmm. um, of, of being low, especially being a diabetic, there's a, there's a, a huge percentage uh, of diabetics do have uh, uh, problems of, uh, of, of that sort of ilk. Because, I mean, I'm an ex-professional fighter. I've had over 300 fights. I was I like I could run through walls, literally. I was like, yeah, here I am to save the day. And I'm like, what happened? I'm like, I'm scared in the crowd. <laughs> it's, it's, it's happened. And it's not because I'm scared psychologically. I feel fragile. Yeah, I've got, and that's the other for, for me. I mean, I've had a lot of fights so my body it's not that I'm scared about fighting, but there's things that are all bashed. And if you've not got the right hormones going, well, you're not repairing properly. No. Yeah. So I'm getting aches in my back, arthritis, it, it just, it goes on and on and on. What advice would you give people watching the show if they are seeing in themselves or in their partners that kind of behavioural change? What should they do? Well, the, the, the first thing is, is going chat to your, your GP, which is us as men, as you're rightly saying, don't do. And it tends to be our other halves that are, uh, are the key link here of, of, of that our other halves notice the difference more than we notice the mm. difference. So it's, it's getting those, those links through. Do and for me, it was a blood test that, that, mm. uh, that, that uh, uh, sort of uh, shown this... And made it uh, real. ...possibility, very much It so. was actually a thing yeah. rather than just a Exactly. Yeah. Based upon your experience... Yeah. There's been some studies done in relation to uh, low levels of tea and relation to suiciding mm. in middle-aged men. Mm. Do you feel that that's probably um, a correlation between the two? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely. In 2015, a case study was done on a young combat veteran with dual diagnosis and suicidal behaviour. They stated, given the important role that testosterone plays in the regulation of mood and behaviour, that it is potentially an important marker for suicide risk in an already at risk population. There's possibly a correlation between low T and suicide in middle aged men. 100%. I see that. In 2022, the Brazilian Journal for Psychiatry examined the morning testosterone levels in male combat veterans. They found that free and total testosterone levels were lower in suicide attempters compared to non-attempters. Statistics show that men are three times more likely to commit suicide than women. I probably felt the sort of lowest and the most anxious I ever have. Um, and, it, and I guess it was probably a little bit of a spiral because um, when your hormone levels are as they were, I mean, I had blood tests that showed really low testosterone and really high cortisol. So it was, everything was out of whack. And obviously it's hard to kind of um, have a s stable mindset when internally your hormones are all over the place. People that suffer depression, not everybody, but some people who suffer depression, they really need to go and get themselves checked out because if they go and get their blood test on and they're showing low testosterone, that can have a massive effect and a massive effect on people's everyday to day life. Well, as we mentioned earlier on, I'm not going to go into this here and now, but I've, I've felt suicidal, yeah. horrendously suicidal. I mean, why, what's going on? Why am I feeling like this? So. Mental health is incredibly complicated. And you know, 
testosterone impacts numerous parts of the brain. So you need testosterone, you need a healthy testosterone. So many of our patients have admitted to being suicidal prior to TRT. We've got so many patients off of antidepressants. We've worked well over 2,000 patients. All of them present with an element of mental discord, whether that be lack of motivation, drive, self-esteem, confidence, to suicidal. Do you, do you feel like you were left with no choice? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If I left it to the NHS, I'd be dead. Why'd you say that? Suicide entered my mind every single day. I didn't want to live anymore. I had no reason to live in my mind. Nothing made sense to me. Go and get checked out. Ask the doctor, 100%. It's helped me. Um, and if you can't, private. And so for me, I think the passion is just around trying to get the message out there that um, sometimes if you've got those symptoms, it can be caused by low testosterone. I'd always urge if you, people to get checked. Um, but then also, um, I guess the wider point is around maybe as a um, you know healthcare system, we need to try and make sure that the right provisions are in place to treat people. Mm. Um, because my experience shows that probably not. You know, I, I don't feel any sort of animosity towards the NHS at all. Um, and you know, they, they do a fantastic job, but, but I would um, urge them to look into the treatment for this condition and ju just considering maybe th their approach to it. Because I, I wouldn't want to see other people in the same position that I was. Yeah. So is it fair to say you feel there's a there's a gap somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. There's a gap, uh, yeah. and there's possibly a lack of understanding, a lack of awareness. Absolutely. And we're not just talking about men; we're talking about women as well. You know, hormones is a massive factor in day-to-day -day life, and if your hormones aren't balanced the way they should be, it's causing a lot of problem. The NHS are figuring this out now slowly. Women, oh yeah, you got the menopause. Or take HRT, hormone replacement therapy. It's the same thing what men need, hormones. There were 7.8 million HRT drug items prescribed in 21 stroke 22. This was a 35% increase from the previous year. In comparison, the number of male patients prescribed testosterone medications for TRT in the UK for 21 stroke 22 was just 77,836. But, you know, if you fit that range of an 80-year-old man, you're fine. Bit in mind you're only 20, 30, you know, but the, the help isn't out there like it is for women. And let's be honest, like, you know, if it was, would there be as many problems today with depression? Would there be as many problems with... Um, well, it goes deep as you want it to, really. I think the main thing for me is the change in my um, sort of mental state. I think um, having hormones that are all over the place does... Re I would never have known that until I experienced it myself, but really can affect your, um, your mental state, I guess. Is it quite sobering to think what could have happened if you hadn't have had that employee come in and say, have you thought about testing this? Have you, have you, have you ever thought about how your life might have been? Yeah, and think about it often. And just thank God that circumstances ended up as they did. Too late.